Hi there and welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we're starting a three-part series on collectible miniatures. I want to create videos based on things that I'm interested in, so hopefully some of you are too. This video is going to focus on the different games that you might run across, such as Warhammer or Dungeons and Dragons. How are these games compatible? Which ones might be for you? Part two next week will focus on the variety of models you can find out there in the world including the wide world of 3D printing. Our third and last video will then discuss painting methods and terminology. All of these videos are for beginners and are meant to be introductory. On the screen, I'll also be highlighting channels that you may want to look into, from various gaming and hobby channels that I'm a huge fan of. There are many, many, many games that you can play with miniatures, but I discovered them through the company Games Workshop. They have a game system called Warhammer, with two variations. Warhammer Age of Sigmar is a fantasy style war game where two or more people pitch their armies against each other. It's primarily dice driven and you have many options for which armies to choose. So you can lean towards traditional fantasy races such as elves, orcs, or humans, or a little more out there such as the lizard men called Seraphon or the various races of demons present in this world. There is also a science fiction version of Warhammer called Warhammer 40,000, or shortened to 40K. In this version, the gameplay is relatively similar, but you have races that are much more technological and alien. Games Workshop also has a game centered on the Lord of the Rings franchise, which is a much simpler scope, but might appeal to you if you love that franchise already. This is still a competitive game, where one player might control one of the armies of good against a friend who has a force of darkness. Games Workshop games are traditionally massive sprawling battles requiring many miniatures, but you can find smaller skirmish based games that utilize the same models if you can't afford a huge army. We've also got the company Privateer Press. They've got a lot of different games under their umbrella, but most notably the games Hordes and War Machine. Hordes is the fantasy variant with a handful of different factions that you can collect and face off against your friends. War Machine is a little bit more sci-fi, but veers into steampunk rather than outright futuristic. So you can collect war casters who control massive war jacks. These games are both smaller in scale, so you only need a handful of models to play. We now pivot to Frostgrave. Frostgrave is a miniatures competitive game but incorporates much more in terms of spellcasting as your force revolves around a wizard or two in the spells that they can use, as well as brute force to attack your enemies. There's also a focus on stringing together smaller games that you then put into an overarching campaign. Very similar to the fantasy Warhammer, we have something called Kings of War. This is much more about rank and file armies so you might have a lot of miniatures on the table. Warhammer has moved away from ranked units, so a lot of players interested in that feel and movement of the game have now moved over to Kings of War. And then we have Dungeons & Dragons and other tabletop role-playing games, which utilize miniatures but aren't traditionally competitive. I have entire videos outlining both Dungeons & Dragons and Warhammer if you want a deeper dive. But D&D specifically, I like miniature-focused Dungeons & Dragons, seeing the environment and the monsters you're facing. Others might prefer what's called theater of the mind, where it's less about the logistics of the battlefield and measuring distance and more about the theatrics and imagining what's happening. But if you wanted miniatures, D&D has their own minis, as well as plenty of miniatures from other games that are transferable. Let's talk about what that means to use other models. Each game has a specific scale, which is how big the miniatures are, and you should make sure that your models adhere to that scale. Typically the scale is the distance from the base to their eye level, and for an average human, how many millimeters is that? For example, D&D is typically 25 millimeter scale, while Warhammer is 28 millimeters, sometimes even closer to 32 millimeters. So a Warhammer, average human, would look larger than one in D&D. So if you're mixing and matching systems or trying to use other brands, make sure that you know what scale. D&D also uses a standard sizing system, 
so all medium-sized creatures or humans fit onto a 1 inch or 25 millimeter sized base. So even if you find a Warhammer model that you'd want to use for DD, you'd also have to consider the base size and the shape. It can be complicated, but it's rewarding if you're able to use your models across systems. These are just a few of the big games. You might know other war games, you might even have board games that have fantastic miniatures. Next week our video will discuss the details of these models. We'll go into a bit more about scale and the best places to purchase models, including the wide world of 3D printing. See you next week.